sorry if I'm a little distracted during this video. Um, just kind of multitasking, doing a lot of things. But I have been wanting to come on here and give my basically third part of my um, testimony. Well, not testimony, actually, no. This is my actual testimony from what I've been through uh, with the MS journey that I'm on. Um, I think, okay, so I said part three because on my YouTube channel, if you haven't subscri subscribed yet, I suggest you go do so. Um, my name is Destiny Santasia. But um, I have a basically an explanation of my diagnosis and um, the basically the like the symptoms and stuff the things that I faced um when I was like kind of newly diagnosed I think I was two years into it after I had recorded those videos so you need you guys can go to my youtube channel and go uh, watch those that'll kind of give you like a background of where I started and where I am now um this video however is going to be about where I am now um which I think the other two videos I uploaded in 2018 I think or 2019 I can't remember but um yeah this is new this is 2020 so this video is going to be pertaining to um my testimony basically about um some huge changes that I have made as it pertains to my health um which are really really major 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 changes um something that I didn't think that I would do but I'm so grateful that I um you know did the took the steps that I needed to take and I'm so happy that I went through what I went through in order to get me where I am today because had I not I probably would have been still in the same regimen that I was on last year um and that you know that wasn't helping me feel any better from what I was already feeling so um to basically give you guys like a background um, I'll give you a background of the, the videos that I made prior to this video, and then I'll just go right into what's going on now. Um, one second, sorry, y'all. Okay, so um, in part one of the um, video that I made in, in my YouTube, on my YouTube channel, um, I basically gave a explanation of how I was diagnosed, the, um, excuse me, the symptoms that I experienced, uh, that came about randomly that I didn't, you know, I didn't know what was going on. Um, the diagnosis came about when I had noticed that I had, I was having like spotted vision in my left eye. Um, and I felt like it wasn't normal and I was like, well, maybe it's something that, you know, I wake up today and then, you know, tomorrow would it be gone or whatever. But, um. It continued on for like a couple of weeks. I think I probably went to the doctor maybe a week or two later to figure out what it was. So I went to my eye doctor because it was, you know, um, stemming from my eye. So I went to my eye doctor or whatever. He then referred me to a neurologist. Neurologist referred me to the hospital to get an MRI. And then that's how the whole MS diagnosis came about. Um, so I kind of went into a little bit further detail about it in part one of that. And then in part two, I described a lot about the symptoms that I experienced while I was um, just going through the phase of the MS journey. And then um, also uh, explained my medication, the medication and uh, how it made me feel and how it affected my body and, you know, just how my body felt, you know, going through those stages within those two years. Because the diagnosis was in 2016. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe I made those videos at the end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019. So I kind of gave you guys like a two year, three year type of um, journey or explanation. So that's what happened with that. But let's just dig right into um, the testimony part of what's going on with me now. So um, I would say probably early or middle October of last year. So October of 2019. I experienced um, a really bad relapse it was bad but it wasn't as bad but it was bad enough for me because it was something that I had had an experience you know throughout the journey of being on it or being on MS throughout the journey of having you know the diagnosis of MS 
so that was something that was new to me I had never you know experienced it and when you know I start to experience new things within my body I tend to get nervous um you know I was already nervous with everything just in general um with everything that was just you know there like just being diagnosed with the illness that is so that's chronic that nobody in my family had and that randomly just hit me and so it was really weird to um you know just go through different things um it, it was weird to go through things um that wasn't normal because I had you know I had been on the journey for two to three years so I had a norm of what was going on you know I was taking my medication every day um working out here and there I was still eating kind of like you know foods that I felt were okay to eat um so I kind of had like you know my normal routine that I that I did like I didn't really think you know anything different and I didn't expect to go through anything different I thought everything was just basically going to remain the same um I would have like you know symptoms of fatigue and dizziness here and there but that stuff was like I was pretty much used to it because I felt as though it was just coming it was a side effect from my medication so I just didn't you know really think too deep about it I had contacted my doctor of course when those things occurred and uh the first time when something occurred um he ordered me to get another mri to see if there was new lesion activity lesions are the um spots on your brain that kind of causes the um disabled activity the disabled activity or whatever that comes or the symptoms the disability symptoms or whatever that comes with ms so he ordered me to get another mri and um i had went to the doctor's office for another visit and uh, he, you know, was telling me maybe I should start thinking about, you know, trying to do a different medication. And so I was like, oh, well, I'll, we'll just think about it. Like, I'm not going to make any decisions at that time. This was prior to October. So I'm talking about like little symptoms that I had here and there that weren't really normal for me, but they were starting to get to me. So, um, so this was before the October um, period or the October relapse rather. And so um, I told him I would just wait and continue with the medication that I was already on. And he was like, that's fine, you can do so. If you change your mind, contact me. And I was like, fine, that's cool. So um, back to October of 2019, I experienced a very, very, very extreme relapse. Um, like I said, something that I'd never experienced before. Um, my whole left side of my body from probably my shoulder down my shoulder down to my leg came became extremely limp like everything like i'm i'm not standing so i can't show you guys but i'm gonna try to but my left arm was like like i'm able to move my arms now because i have movement obviously but this arm was like limp it was just hanging there and i noticed that i don't, I don't know if you guys can tell but it was just like this like how it is right now it was like that like for a long period of time and so I, I talked to my mom and my grandma about it and I was like it's so weird like I feel like I can't even feel my arm like it feels like it's almost not even there I said and then it just sits there and it doesn't move so I was like that's really weird to me and then um you know I started to experience that and then as things continued to go on my left leg became numb so I'm now like dragging my leg you know dragging my my leg like okay my movement my feeling in my leg is like really not there and so that's when I became like really really scared um that's when I became really really afraid I was like okay this is not normal and um I I don't know why but I started googling stuff um of course ms related but other things also popped up and so i began to get really nervous and i was like you know what i'm just gonna have to go in um and and talk to my doctor about it so he then ordered me to get um another mri and i was extremely nervous about the results for this mri because my relapse was so severe it was so serious and i was like oh my gosh i cannot deal with this like i'm so afraid but i prayed though and i asked god to just help me to remain calm but even i'm not i'm not gonna lie to y'all even within 
you know, with even, even within praying that prayer or those prayers, because I pray multiple prayers, I was still nervous because I was like, I don't know what's going on with my body. And um, I had researched the side effects of the medication that I was taking and it was scary side effects. And I was like, oh my gosh, maybe one of these things are occurring and I'm not knowing. So I was just really nervous about it. But thankfully, um, you know, my results from my MRI um, after that whole relapse, because it started to, the relapse lasted for a while. It lasted for a good couple of weeks. Um, for a good couple of weeks, it really did. It, it ran its course for sure. Um, and I and I couldn't really do much about it. It was just something that had to go. They didn't want to give me steroids because um, I think I had called maybe a little bit too later in order for steroids to even work. But even with that, I take that as a blessing. Like, thank you, God, I didn't get on steroids because I've read situations where people get on steroids for relapses and their steroids were completely, you know, dissemble their body and, and sometimes the worst happens. And so I was like, you know what? Thank you, God, I didn't have to go through that. Um, glad it was, ooh, just hit my mouth. Glad it was too late, though, you know, because um, it, it could have saved me from something else. So after the MRI um, came back you know he wanted to conduct another appointment with me in person to talk about the results and then he also um, wanted to talk about another medication option mind you this is kind of the second relapse within a few months so he was really really like head on about another um, medication option and uh, he he wasn't He wasn't uh he wasn't really backing off with, with that concept and so I kind of knew you know that it was coming but um I was still a little like weak-minded in the MS world or whatever I really or the blah, blah, I can't talk I was really weak-minded in the MS world I really didn't know you know what medications were good for me what medications weren't good for me so um during this appointment or whatever, he began speaking about medications that uh, he felt would be good options for me. So, of course, you know, I wasn't, I haven't been doing any research, major, major research behind MS. I don't know why. I guess I was just kind of still like in denial. And then also I was still like, you know, blah, because I was fine up until October when I had that relapse. So I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't really need to like dig deep, like the doctor is telling me what to do you know it is what it is this was my very first situation where i've been diagnosed with any type of illness anything sick and health related so this whole life this whole lifestyle this whole ms journey is extremely new to me it was extremely new to me and i didn't take the time to do or conduct the research that i should have did when that diagnosis in 2016 first came about but hey, you live and you learn. Sometimes it takes longer than, you know, uh, others to learn things. So it definitely, that definitely occurred to me. But, um, so he began talking about medications, uh, or whatever, about what he would recommend me to take. So there were two medications that he, um, recommended that he brought up. One of them was, uh, this medication called Lemtrada. And then there was another one that was called Ocrevus. Both of these medications are um, infusion-based medications. So they're um, basically IV um, medications where you get rounds of IV fluids, but it's the medication in your system. And you're basically monitored for a specific amount of time because these medications are very, very, very severe. They're very strong. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Lemtrada was one that you take, um, that you take it once and then I think that's it and you don't take it again, like, you know, unless you had a relapse or something and they, you know, found more lesions and you need to switch medications. But this one was so potent, it was so strong to where you would only need that one doses and that should take care of your well-being throughout, which is insane to even like grasp in my head and so I was like okay 
it, it felt scary, but they gave me a packet on it to research and to kind of read up on it. Then he also mentioned um, the Ocrevus, which is, again, the infusion-based one. And the Ocrevus was one that um, you get your dosage or whatever, and then you get another dosage like every six months or so, something like that. Um, I think I got it wrong, but it's something like that, though. Um, so... I was like okay what what made my mind like okay this might be this may be able to work was the easy the conveniency of it it was convenient because I was used to taking a pill literally every day I took a pill every day but prior to you know having to switch me or talk about switching medications I had been taking my medication like every other day on and off um just because when I would take it I would get like weird sensations in my head something that I really can't explain like I really can't tell you the feeling of what it felt like but I know it was a weird sensation that I got in my head and I used to take my medication at night right before bed and so I would get those feelings right before bed and I'm like no this I can't do this because it makes my head feel weird and I don't like that so I immediately um, started taking them every other day and I was trying to, you know, pay attention to when I take my pill to see how my body reacts to it or how my body changes. And I noticed that when I took the pill, I got those head feelings. And so I was like, you know what? Hmm, I don't know about that. But I continued to take them every other day just because, you know, I was I was instructed to basically. Um, and so with the Ocrevus medication, um, the major major side effect to that was that you have an increased risk of getting breast cancer when i heard that y'all i'm like what like seriously who would make that and so i was like okay well that automatically omitted that medication i was like no i'm not going to risk getting breast cancer for a medication that i don't even know much about and is it really worth it who knows because he said it works for some and some it doesn't work sometimes it goes through well sometimes it gives you symptoms and then you react to it and you get other stuff i'm like no not i'm done with that already you know you the the breast cancer thing took me straight out and then um the lentrata the other one the the biggest uh risk with that one was that you get a lot of upper respiratory um infections you get a lot of respiratory infections so again i'm like okay what's better the risk of getting breast cancer or the risk of having an upper respiratory infection so at that time i'm like okay upper respiratory infections are you know they're major or whatever but maybe i can get through them so I told him, I said, well, you know, maybe I'll think about the Lemtrada. So I signed the paper. I signed the paper after getting all the information. And I even asked him, I said, well, what would you recommend? Because I don't really know. I said, this whole MS journey is still new to me. So I don't really know what to take. I don't know what's good for me. You know, I don't know how to read my papers based upon what I've been through. So, you know, what would you recommend me to take? And so he said, well... You know, since you were not with the Ocrevus, he said, maybe the Lentrata. So I said, okay, that's fine. And I said, I'll sign the paper or whatever. And he said, well, just let me know, you know, when you want to come in and start. So I was like, can I have a packet so I can take home and research? So I, I did that. I took a packet home and I'm going to have to cut this video off and make another one because I'm already at 18 minutes. But um, I did that. I took a packet home and I researched it. And y'all, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh. The, the the research of the Lentrata, like, it, it seriously made me panic because I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I never thought that I would have to come to a point where I would have to choose this, where I would have to choose to switch medications. Switching medications was not sitting well within me anyway because my body had already became used to the Jelenia medication that I was on. And so I'm like, dang, switching medications is a serious matter that doesn't always end well. Um, and that switch doesn't always go well. So um, I was very, very nervous about that. Um, I'm trying to get my thoughts together because I'm, I got a lot on my mind of what to say. But I have to start another video. So I will see you guys in the next one. One second. Or I'll be right back.